The Week in Bible Prophecy, a Prophecy Watchers podcast. Well, welcome to the podcast, everybody. And before we get started, I want to encourage you to make sure to uh, subscribe to our channel. We have a lot of uh, fun things going on here. And today I have Lee Brainerd with me. Welcome, Lee. Mondo, it's good to be here again. I always enjoy my time with the Prophecy Watcher family. Yeah, we've done some good stuff already. And so here we are on another podcast. But uh, before we get started, let people know where they can find out about uh, all the stuff you're doing, ministry and website and YouTube and all that. Yeah, they can go to my YouTube channel, which is Soothkeep, or they can go to my website, soothkeep.info. I have a lot of articles. I have a lot of good videos on subjects that are of interest to those that love Bible prophecy. Yeah, it's awesome. And uh, today uh, we want to talk about date setting because let's just put out right up there. If somebody offered you the date, the Lord came and said, Lee, I'll give you the date of the Lord's return. Um, would you want to know? Well, the first thing that happens, brother, when I do get this on a regular basis, uh -huh. people send me emails, they shoot mm -hmm. me, watch this video or you need to watch my video. And I, I don't want to sound mean or harsh, but I, it's all I can do to not roll my eyeballs, brother. Yeah. Um, because I honestly believe, as we read in Matthew 24, 36, that no one knows the day nor the hour. Yeah. This is a concrete principle. Yeah. So, you know, I think that uh, I, I resonate because I was a date setter at one time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got saved in the early 90s and... Uh, and why was I dead sitting? Not, not because I wasn't, I didn't have a YouTube channel. I wasn't even pastoring. Uh, I simply just wanted to know. Yeah. And, uh, it's exciting. It'd be great to know in advance. And, uh, so I understand people's zeal. Absolutely. I get it. I mean, certainly, uh, we know in Matthew 16 that Jesus uh, scolded the Pharisees for not knowing, um, about his return. And so it, it is good to be watching. But when it comes to, uh, date setting my, because of Matthew 24, 36, uh, I just encourage people don't get sucked into it because it's exciting, but every time, well, here we are. Yeah. No, no date so far has been right. That's right. We've got about 10 years since there's been a, a, a steady stream of YouTube date setters, at least 10 years. And every year we have dozens of iterations of theories, and they, that's all have, have struck out. Yeah. So and now, uh, the other thing, too, is if, if, if 5 billion people uh, decided all of us are going to choose a date yeah. for the next 5 billion days, yeah. one of us would get lucky. That's right. Exactly right. Okay, we'd get lucky. So people say, well, if somebody, if somebody puts forth a date, well, I guess it can't be that date. I don't think that's what Jesus is saying, because again, if 5 billion people picked a date, well, somebody's going to get lucky. What Jesus is simply saying, and this is good for background, in Matthew 24, um, in, I've talked about this at the pre-trib, that the context there from Luke 21 is that Jesus says, you know, don't get caught up into debauchery, et cetera, that that, that day overtake you as a snare, as a trap. Pray that you be counted worthy to escape all these things. But then if you compare the Gospels, the, the context is the day of the Lord and the smoothness of the Olivet Discourse in harmony. The next verse says, but of that day and hour, no one knows. He's talking about the day of the Lord, that nobody knows when it's going to start. But we know as preacher people that the rapture is going to happen prior. So what's true about the day of the Lord, nobody knowing when it's going to arrive, is it true about the rapture as well? It's even more true. Because we have no idea how long that window is. Yep. So let's talk about, um, we can go back to some of the failures, the 88 reasons why Jesus is coming back in 1988, you know, <laughs> and then you have Harold Camping. I remember reading a book in 1994 yep. and I remember getting really excited. I just got saved. But then you know, I remember I was pastoring in, I think it was, it was 2011, May, May 21st or something of 2011. Harold Camping was back on the on the bandwagon. I mean, billboards. I was living in uh, Illinois. Billboards around. And of course, Jesus is coming back. Guaranteed. So these people are just wrong. Now, we do know that it's real. Yes. But the idea of of calculating it out with certainty, there was another guy last, last May. Uh, he said, the rapture's happening in June, and it was going to coincide with the Feast of Pentecost. And I remember writing him, and I was very nice, but on his YouTube channel, I said, hey, man, I go, I encourage you not to date set, because uh, I said, if it doesn't come to pass, I said, I hope you're right, man, I want the rapture today. If it doesn't come to pass, will you come back here and publicly apologize? 
And he just deleted my comment. And I'm like, I, look, man, I was being nice. I'm just simply asking because every time that somebody does that and it fails, how does it, you tell me, how does it interfere with our ministry? Well, what I find is, and the, the one that strikes out to me or stands out to me the most is last fall with the Feast of Trumpets mm -hmm. and the supposed Shemitah cycle. Yep. And they were, some of them said, well, we're relatively sure. Some of them, we think this is just a good high watch time. But there's others said, absolutely, I guarantee the rapture is going to happen. Well, they're just, I can understand from one perspective, they're excited about the coming of the Lord, yeah. and they hope it happens tomorrow. And every little excuse for looking at a near-term rapture date, they're all over it because they want the Lord to come. And I get that part of it. But what I don't get, and it bothers me, is I get a steady stream of letters from people who are following their favorite uh, YouTube preachers uh, and following their date setting for you know, the last two th years, three years. They got tired that five, six, seven, eight, ten dates that they set their heart on have collapsed, and they are discouraged yep. waiting for the Lord. And that discouragement is, to me, tells us there's something wrong with this date setting mentality because it leads to a river of discouragement. Yep. And and, and I think that uh I have a friend of mine who really enjoy he he grew up Baptist, uh grew up in the 70s in the Baptist church, grew up in the in the Hal Lindsey late great planet earth book. And so I was I went to school with him in uh, around 2008 and I was talking about, you know, the prophecy and you know all the things that were happening. He goes, "You know, Mono, they've been saying that since as long as I've been alive." He goes, I'm just burned out on all of it. And so he, gave, he gave, not even gave up his faith, but he gave up the idea of even watching. But what's the mistake there? I mean, why, why are you not burned out on waiting for the Lord? Well, my understanding is that I see evidence that the coming of the Lord is near. I've been watching it since the early 80s as a babe in the Lord with, with the, uh, the early stage setting for the coming tribulation. This stuff has been slowly developing. And back in the 80s and 90s, when people were setting hard rapture dates, I'd look at that and I'd say, the, the, the stage has barely started to get yeah, set. Yep. It doesn't make sense to me. And so I'm looking at a general prophetic convergence. The, the trying to set a date is not in my radar. It doesn't fit my theology, doesn't fit my eschatology, doesn't fit my ecclesiology. It doesn't fit anywhere. It doesn't resonate with me. It doesn't make sense mm -hmm. to me. The idea that people want to see the Lord come real soon makes sense to me <clears throat> because they'll say, well, I want the Lord to come this week. I want him to come today. Amen. I do too. Yeah, let's go. We're ready. But in my mind, I just see that it's detrimental in the yeah. long run. And what has preserved me is I've got my eyes set not on any particular date so I can be discouraged and have my hopes let down. Mm -hmm. All I see is this convergence getting stronger and stronger, and that tells me just like when the signs of a volcanic eruption, they get closer together, they get stronger in their intensity, uh, when they get more diversified in their variation, you know that eruption is coming soon. Well, we see uh, the number of uh, signs are, are multiplying, we see that their signs are getting closer together, we see there's more intensity in them, we know the rapture's coming. We keep our eyes on that. We will never get let down. Yeah, that, that you couldn't say it better. The I think about me. You know, I've been watching for the same thing for thirty years, but um, I've given up on the date setting or even really trying to find out. A lot of people spend a lot of time calculations, and you're like, uh, "Don't do that." Yeah, if right. you want to avoid getting burned out or being discouraged or having a letdown, just give up the whole idea. Of trying to find a date. Now, let us let me play devil's advocate against you here, Lee. Yeah. I can play the devil. I wrote a book on the screw tape letters, so I understand his strategies. Yep. Um, <laughs> so, you know, Lee, you're wrong here. You, you can, because didn't Paul say, I can quote scripture, being the devil. Yeah. Didn't Paul say in First Thessalonians 5 that we know the times and the seasons, that we're not in darkness? So, yeah. what's up with that? Well, we do know the times and seasons. But knowing the times, plural, and the seasons, plural, which is the same thing that we talk about, the signs of the times, Okay, that's what he's dealing with. And once you get into that era that he's talking about, you'll, you'll see a definite start for the, for, I mean, the rapture of the church, that is the morning star of the day of the Lord. When, when you see uh, the Antichrist revealed, he makes that uh, 
uh, he's going to make the uh, covenant. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we know the seven years have begun. We're going to see him sit in the middle of the week in the temple and declare himself God. We know we're halfway through. We're dealing with some definite events that can be put on a definite timetable, and that's what he's talking about. Yeah, okay, okay. So uh, I'll play no, another devil's advocate at you. Um, we know that according to the 70 weeks prophecy, yeah. uh, the first 69 weeks, uh, I'll read to you a passage here. Uh, when we look at uh, Sir Robert Anderson's work, um, you know, 19, 1897, uh, he wrote a book called The Coming Prince. And a lot of people have done work on that where uh, 69 weeks, you calculate it out, it's 173,880 days. Uh, you started on, well, he had started it on 445 B.C., other scholars like Harold Honer have come and said, no, it's really March 14th, 444 uh, BC. But that comes to the exact date in 33 AD. Yes. Okay. Passover, the triumphal entry. And Jesus says here in, in Luke 19, when he drew near and saw the city, he wept over it saying, would that you, even you had known on this day, the things that make for your peace, but now they are hidden from your eyes. So one of the things that Sir Robert Anderson discussed was that the triumphal entry happened on the exact day of the fulfillment of the 69 weeks. So Jesus, they could have predicted based on that mathematical formulation that Jesus was arriving on a certain day. So why can't we do the same for the second coming? Well, I like to always step back and realize that there's a distinction between the timetable the Lord has for the Jewish people and the timetable that he has for the church. And if we notice uh, that the 69 weeks, if, if this is correct, ended uh, on the day of the triumphant entry. For the sake yep. of argument, let's yep. go with it. Okay, then we have a, a window of time. He's crucified after the 69th week. And then we, we come into the fall of Jerusalem in 70 AD. We haven't come to the last seven years yet. So the, the church fits into this time, the, this parentheses of time. Mm -hmm. And there's nothing in the scripture that gives us any timetable information for that era. But there's a lot of stuff that gives us uh, from the cross backwards and from the beginning of the 70th week forwards with Israel. Yeah, I think uh, what I would say, and again, people mean well, which is great, and, and it's a it's a good question, but Gabriel gave Daniel a mathematical prophecy. That's right. We haven't been given that. That's exactly there's, right. There's nothing, I mean, think about how overt this is. I yeah. mean, it's in scripture, right. Daniel 9. Anybody can go there and look at it and calculate it. But when you come to the second coming or the start of the 70th week, yep. Daniel did not he was not given by the angel. Hey, by the way, after the 69th week is over, I've given you that prophecy exactly. Yeah. And we see those inter intervening uh, events that you described. He doesn't say, by the way, this is how you're going to know mathematically the start of the 70th week. There's nowhere else in scripture in the New Testament that gives us that mathematical equation. So God could have given that to us. And, but some people, he, like he did Gabriel, 